Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at how to call a form using X++ code. So in the past, we looked at how to call a form using a menu item that was attached to a menu, and later we looked at a menu item button on a form. Well, today I'm going to show you how to call a form using a regular button, um, overriding the clicked method, and writing X++ code to call the form. There's a few advantages, but let's show an example first, and then we can talk about uh, those advantages. So here I have a form, it's called RSM model. Um, it's one that I've used in past videos to show make and model of um, a car. Um, and I want to have a form, or a button rather, um, call the make form where I can list other makes of cars. So in a past video, I set up a menu item button and I set um, the menu item name um, to call that form. Well, in this lesson, I'm gonna actually create a new button that does that. So let's start at the beginning. So if we have a form and we've got a action pane, the action pane needs a button group. And then once we have a button group, we can actually add a button to that. The way we add a button to our button group is we right click on the button group, select new, and then button. So in the past we've selected menu item button. In this case, we're gonna select button. We get a new button. I recommend you rename the button. I'm gonna um, call it uh, form button control make two. Normally I wouldn't end the name of a button control with a number, but just to differentiate it from the one that I've already created. The next thing we need to do is set the text of the button so that it actually displays something. So I'll say call a form using X plus plus and hit enter. Once we do that, our preview pane should refresh and show our new button right here. So you can see I've already created a button um, that does this. I'm creating a second button now. After I have the button, I need to override the clicked method because inherently buttons just don't do anything um, without a click method. So I can expand the button, find this methods node, right click on the methods node and select override, and then select this method clicked. The system will then generate the code I need for this clicked method um, and put it into my class here. I've got my previous code for the clicked method here, so I can just even remove this um, just so you can see the whole thing. So this is my clicked method. If you were extending um, a existing Microsoft form, you'd need to extend the form first to add that button, and then you would need to use chain of command to be able to add this click method. But since this form was created in the same model that we're working in, we can just add that click method directly. Okay, now that we have our clicked method, we want to write X++ code to call another form. Um, and the way we do that is actually um, pretty simply, we can just, um, I'll copy and paste it over here, and then we'll talk through it. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit to make it a little larger so that you can see it all. Okay, the first thing we need to do is declare a couple variables. We need to declare a variable of type args and a variable of type form run. Um, from here, we actually have two different ways that we can call a form. We can call a form directly using the form name, or we can call a form um, using a menu item. So I'm gonna actually start with calling the form directly. And so to do that, we actually just need these few lines of code right here. The way we do that is we first instantiate the args class and the args class takes a string um, as its input and it wants the name of the form that we want to run. So in this case, I, I'm going to use this global function called form string. 
and then pass in the name of the form that I want open, which is called RSM make. You can replace this whatever form you're using. We definitely want to use the global function form string rather than a hard coded um, string with quotes around it because um, this form string will make sure that this form exists and will provide a compile time error if it doesn't, whereas a hard coded string won't and we'll just get an error at runtime. So now that we've passed the args um, constructor, um, the name of our form that we want to run, we're going to set it to a local variable args right here. Next, we want to instantiate the form run class and pass it our args variable right here. Um, and then we get a form run object out of it. Uh, in case you didn't know, form run is actually the base class for all forms that run. And forms are really just classes with UI elements to it. Um, so we're really just instantiating a form run object. And by passing in an args object with the name of the form set on it, we're telling um, the system what form we would like to open. So this, these two lines are kind of the key piece of this whole thing. And then lastly, there's three methods that we need to run. We need to first call the init method on form run. This initializes all of the controls on the form, our data source, our buttons, our tabs, everything, and creates those. Run actually activates and starts running the form and allows a user um, to interact with the form. And then wait is actually going to make sure that the execution pointer stops at this point. It's not going to continue on and run additional code on this calling form until a user has fully finished with this form and closed that form. Once that form's been closed, it will move past this wait and move on to running the rest of the code on this existing form. So this is how we call a form directly using just the name of the form. Now let me show you how you can call a form using a menu item. I'm going to copy um, or comment out those few lines and I'll uncomment these few lines. So now um, here it's very, very similar. We've got a new args object and we also are instantiating the form run object. But instead of instantiating it directly, we're actually going to use this class called menu function. Menu function actually takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the menu item we'd like to call. And so again, we're going to use a global function called menu item display string and pass in the name of our, um, for our menu item for the same reasons. Secondly, we're going to um, pass in the type of menu item. In this case, the type of menu item is a display menu item. That's always should be true when we're calling a form. Uh, display menu items are used by forms, output um, are used by reports, and action menu items are used by um, batch jobs. So in this case, we're gonna pass in the display menu item. Then immediately after instantiating this menu item class, all within the same line, we're going to call create and create is actually going to return the form run object um, that's associated with this menu item. We're also going to pass in args. Right now when we pass in args, it's really not doing anything, um, but this will um, make more sense in a second when we add more to this code. So now that we have the form run object and we know what form we're calling, we're going to call the same three functions again. The init um, method to initialize all the controls on the form, the run method to actually enable it and let the user interact with it, and then the wait method to make sure that um, the uh, system doesn't move on or run more code from this form until the user closes this form. Um, so that's it. But as of right now, um, this code we've written really isn't any better than using a menu item button. Um, it'd be the exact same as using a menu item button. It's going to inherit the same properties that we'd set on this menu item button. Um, but uh, this is where we're going to add some more code to this. Within this X++ code, we can actually write additional conditional statements to set um, values that we're going to pass to the calling form. 
The way we do that is through this args object. Args actually has a bunch of methods on it, um, specifically these ones right here and a few others that allow us to pass data to the calling form. Um, and this is where it becomes more powerful. We can write if statements and other conditional statements to set the values um, that we're sending to the calling form. Whereas with a menu item, those values are essentially hard coded. We can't really change them conditionally. The one exception is the record um, property on this ARBS object. Um, by us setting the data source on a menu item button, that will pass in whatever record is currently selected. Um, but let's look at an example real quick before we finish. So if I grab um, a bunch of this code right here, I'm going to paste it in and then we can talk about it. All right. So after I've instantiated this args class, I've actually set a bunch of different properties on the args object. This isn't a really functional scenario. You would never set all of these at once, but I wanted to show you how you can use each one of these properties on the args class to send values to um, the calling form. First of all, we could we can set the parm enum type and parm enum properties on the arg, args object. Uh, specifically, there's this um, RSM model data source. We can check if the currently selected record is serviceable, flag is set to yes. Then let's go ahead and pass in the parm enum type, the type of enum um, that's used by this field, which is a no yes enum. And then we can pass the value directly to parm enum. I could have just kind of pasted this directly into here as well. Um, but I wanted to be a little bit more explicit so you could see it. If this is set to no, we can still pass in the enum type and then pass in the e enum value as no. So these two properties are really used together um, and you can use these to pass in the enum type and enum um, from one form to another form and then you can override the init method in the calling form to read these values out and control the form. Maybe you want to filter on the data source, you want to um, hide and show buttons or change the caption. Um, there's a lot of things when we pass data in. Okay, moving on to the next um, method. There's a parm method. The parm method takes a string argument so we could pass in um, some conditional string or some string um, based on logic we have here um, just as an example i'm going to pass in the model id on the currently selected record again i could read this value back out in the init method and use it to control the form next we've got the re dot record method this uh, property, this method gets called by the system automatically when you have a menu item button and you've set the data source on that menu item button. But if we're calling this through code, I need to pass in the current, um, so current record on the current data source into um, this dot record method. This gives me all of the variables on this record on in the calling form. This is really useful and really powerful for sending in many values to a calling form. This can also be used to automatically filter the calling form as I showed you in a previous video. Next we've got this dot caller method. This again is set for you if you use a menu item button, um, but otherwise you could pass in the entire form object. This is really powerful because maybe you've got a bunch of form variables that you would like access to in the calling form. We can pass that whole object into args.caller. Lastly, we have args.parm object. I'm pretty sure that the only way to use this or that this um, value is set is if you um, set these args object through code. This parm object can take any type of class object you want to send over. So in this example, I just use instantiate in any class and sent it over. But maybe you'll create a class um, that's a form controller class or um, has properties for each button and control on the calling form that you would like to control and that, that way you have full control from the calling form. Um, that's just one example. So finally, after setting all of these args, we pass it into the create, um, which really passes it 
to this form run um, object and can use it um, when it actually initializes the form. Um, so that's it. Hopefully you've seen some of the advantages of calling a form through X++ code. I would say most of the time you're going to use a menu item button and that will give you a lot of these values um, through properties and you don't have to write code. Um, but there could be scenarios where you have some kind of if or conditional statement that would cause you to change what values you send to a calling form. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.